Hi everybody, Kim Berry here with Kim's DIY Tribe and thanks for being with me. If you haven't hit subscribe below, please do and join the fun. I thought today we'd come together and maybe have a play date, a virtual one. Kids do it, why can't we? I thought we could work on some fun background techniques, some watercoloring, distress oxide inks, foiling. I want to show you a few things that can be used not only to produce this card, but a variety of cards. And you can have fun exploring your own creativity with these techniques and it'll be a lot of fun. So come along, have a play, and let's get started. I'm gonna change the camera view so that you can see exactly what I'm doing and that you don't miss a step. Let's get playing. So, I used Distress Oxide inks for this type of effect and background because it's water reactive. That means when you add water, you get this distressed look. You know if you had copper, how over time an oxidation occurs that gives it another depth of color. A lot of times copper will turn a bluish green color. Well, these will stay in their same palette. So if you have like an olive color paint, it will stay olive after you spritz or dab or sprinkle water on it, but it will give you lots of shades of this olive looking ink. And that's why I like the Distress Oxides to create my backgrounds. I have some basic watercolor paper cut to size, standard card size. I'm gonna be using some stencils. I just, these are what I have on hand. This one's kind of a floral image. This one is the one I used in our project that I am recreating today and I mask off everything but this leaf. I just wanted that leaf to be on the green background I created. Um, use what you have on hand. I'll link what I can below, but play with what you have. That's the whole point of playing, right? So we have the inks. We need a paste, like a gel transfer paste. This one can be used with heat or no heat. I'm not using any heat. I'm just gonna allow it to air dry and then show you how to apply the foils. Foils come in a, a multitude of colors. Literally, the rainbow is available. This one was a rose gold that I happened to use for this project. Um, you can see that the leaf is, well, maybe because it's so shiny, but it's the leaf that I have just pulled off on our project. So I save it because I can use lots more of this foil. You can use every bit of it till it's all clear and transparent. You can keep foiling with this. And so it's very cost effective. Lots of companies make it. I'll link some below. Heidi Swap makes one for mink, deco foil. I think Gina K has some. There's a lot of ones available. Here is a palette knife that I use to apply my paste to my stencil, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And then I use my clear acrylic blocks to paint with, and I always keep a little spritzer of water. This was actually liquid catnip that I have converted and washed to my water bottle, because why waste money? I have this laying around. And then I keep a dirty, well, it's not really dirty until after I play, but it looks dirty because of all my ink. This is where I wipe off. I spray with my water and wipe things off. And this is just an old dish towel um, that I use for this purpose, and it comes in really handy. So you'll see me with that, and it's, I wash it, it's just stained from the ink. So don't judge, don't be a hater. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna put my watercolor paper down and I'm gonna spritz it just lightly. I'm just gonna give it a light spritz. I don't want it soaked, I just want dampness. Then I'm gonna use my inks and I'm going to apply them directly to my clear acrylic block. I love it because they wipe off so easy. I go from light to dark, so I'm gonna start, and there's no rhyme or reason. I mean, you just put it where you like it. It's all going to kind of blend together anyway. And I just rub the ink on here. And if I get somewhere I don't want it, I just use my towel, wipe it off, clear my area just a bit. Okay, now, this is what it looks like. My acrylic block is all inked. I give another little spritz to my block. I'm going to move it over here over my towel real quick. Here, let's do it this way so that you can see. So I just hold it over and I just give a little spritz. And this is where you start seeing the water reacting right away even on your block. You don't want it a soupy mess, but you want it to start to blend a little bit. You'll see the, the water starts that oxidizing process. Okay, so we have just slightly damp cardstock. We have our block that's 
wet and you can go at an angle you can kind of smoosh it around and you drag it over once and you can drag it back over that same one and if you've got an area that didn't quite take like you want it go back and work it around a little bit more and that's where you get some of that beautiful color blending I'm gonna go right there see and don't underestimate the use of your finger. Did you see how I just did that? If you have one little white spot. Now I like some of the white at the edge because that's what makes it look watercolory when you go to trim it. Okay, so here's our background all dried that we did with our Distress inks on an acrylic block. And now I'm gonna show you how to apply your transfer gel, your paste. I'm gonna start by putting my watercolor paper down and I'm gonna do the exact same design. I use washi tape as my low tack tape. I buy it really cheap when it's on sale and then um, use it for the things that the post-it tape. Post-it tape is more expensive. So I use this instead. I tape it directly to my paper underneath to hold everything still and flat because I don't want my gel paste leaking underneath my stencil. I'm stuck, okay. Let's get this going. Now for this, I'm just gonna use a piece of paper. Put in here. And you have to position it. so that it blocks the part of the image you don't want your gel in. And then you're gonna scoop out just a little bit with your palette. It's kind of fun and looks like face cream, honestly. It looks like Pond's face cream. Um, and you're gonna apply it evenly and smoothly as you can. You don't want it super thick or super thin. You just want it to fill the crevices of your stencil. If you see any blank spots, you're gonna go over them and take it all the way up to your tape. And I scoop up the excess when I'm all done and put it back in the jar. If you see an area that seems low lying, go back over it and try to make it flush with the rest. I keep getting this little area right here. like icing a cake. So when that's done, I scrape off the excess in my jar and you immediately clean this off just with water. I'm gonna spritz it with some water and I buy cheap washcloth, spritz it with water, wipe it off and it's good to go. Then I'm going to go ahead and remove the stencil. So I'm gonna loosen up all my edges here get it to where I can easily lift the stencil off. And I just peel it away. And then I check. This also you just put in warm soapy water and 
get it off of there. Do it before it dries though, because it'll leave a tacky residue on your stencil that you don't want. So go do that within five minutes or so. I'm gonna set it to the side. And then I'm gonna check my image and make sure there's no stray marks. If for some reason there is, you can always come in with an X-Acto or tweezers or something and just gently lift any little bit that you got that you didn't want there. So it won't dry. Now, this has to sit for an hour. If you wanna speed it up, you could use a heat gun. Um, don't bubble it though. If you use the heat gun and you start boiling this liquidy paste, it will bubble and it will show underneath your foil. So I usually just prefer to let it sit for an hour. It just takes about an hour and it will go clear. It won't stay white. This is also fun to use um, with glitters and other things because it will be tacky. So you can use this with pigment powders like Pearlex or glitters, ultra fine glitters, not thick or coarse glitter, but it works with other things because it's tacky. Um, but this we're gonna foil. So I'll let it set aside for an hour and I'll be back with you then. While we're waiting on our gel to dry, I thought I'd show you some other backgrounds that were created the same way, just slight variations of technique. For this one, I used a rectangle acrylic block and my daubers and I dabbed them into the oxide inks and literally dotted the colors all over this block, spritzed it, spritzed my paper just like I showed you the first time and then went and put it right like this and stamped it on there. So it kind of gave me these neat irregular borders and I like them like that. Of course, you can tear any edges to give a white edge to it, a rustic or rough edge if you wanted to. But this one's kind of neat for something that you might want to put over here in a sentiment. You could pretty much just trim a little of the white off and turn this right into a card, putting it on a background panel of any of the colors you want to bring out or highlight. Um, and like this kind of got a little off of the pattern. That's where I'd cover it with maybe a stamped image, a flower or some other, a dragonfly, something like that. And so that's how that worked. I did a second pressing. There was still so much ink left after this first pressing that I just did a second one. It just gives a lighter watercolor wash the same way. Here's one I did with, I striped with the edge of the ink pad on these lines in my acrylic block. And I had dampened the paper, dampened this and just dragged it. And then I spritzed it again and finished the drag all the way to the edge so that I got it from one edge to the other. Because there's usually enough ink on here to do more than just one thing. Here's a blue with the multi-shades, kind of an ombre look. Here's one I did on a diagonal with pastels on this one. Here I used the daubers and I went back and forth like this in a diagonal pattern and put it on my paper. Here's a beautiful one with pinks and reds. And here's one with some blues and a little bit of pinks and purples and even a little yellow orange in the middle, just to break it up and give a different feel, depending on what kind of card you wanna use. So this technique produces a variety of things you can use. And like I said, any stencil with your gel paste can work to create some kind of neat effect. I think we'll do one of these right now and I'll show you how this is going to work. We're going to pick this one. And I'm gonna use half of it because I'm gonna cut down this for a card, I wanna use half of this image and I'm gonna line it up and I'm gonna do just like I did before using my tape. I could reuse the tape if I was patient enough to peel off my old tape. I could clean this up and use this tape again if I was wanting to save my materials. You could absolutely do that, okay. Put a little bit here. I don't need full coverage on this part. I just see my stencil lifting a little. So I'm just gonna put some. All right, back to my gel and my palette knife. And I'm just going to level and spread the gel, paste, kind of a combo. It's very smooth and very creamy. It really does remind me of face cream. Oh, now see how that happened right there? So I'm just going to go get my 
cloth and wipe it away before it has a chance to dry or do anything. Now I want to spread this and make sure it's all even. I want to make sure all my crevices are filled in like I want them to be. I see a little low spot here. And because it's kind of thick, it doesn't leak too bad under your stencil. Some people like to spray the back of their stencil with like a temporary adhesive. I don't do that step because I don't want my stencils that sticky for other work that I use them for. So, but it's not a bad idea if you have trouble with leakage under your edges for some reason, maybe your stencils are old and worn or a little bit warped, you may wanna do that. All right, so I'm gonna clean up my palette knife so I don't get that anywhere. And then I'm going to lift my stencil, so I'm gonna loosen my edges all the way around so that I can peel it off easily. And you wanna be careful not to shift and smear anything at this point. And I'm gonna lift it up and peel it off. And that will sit for an hour to dry and I'll show you the foiling on that as well when we come back with our green and rose gold piece. While we're playing with our watercolor backgrounds that we made with the Distress inks and the acrylic blocks, I thought it would be fun to show you the bokeh technique, B-O-K-E-H, and it means like making light diffused or blurry, kind of like when you're a kid and you look at Christmas tree lights and you kind of cross your eyes and it blurs out the lights. We're gonna kind of add a light effect to this using a Brilliance white ink pad and a finger dauber, a circle stencil that you could make yourself with your circle die cuts, especially if you have nested ones in different sizes, you could cut your own stencil. I happen to have a circle one that came in a kit of stencils that I have. And we're going to lay down the ink in different degrees of depth or thickness or opacity, meaning some are gonna be transparent and some are going to be whiter and brighter. And to do that, you're just gonna dab your ink with your finger and you're just gonna arrange your circles Kind of haphazard. You want it to feel whimsical and like bubbles, but not necessarily like we're blowing bubbles, but it, you know how bubbles have that iridescent quality to them. You could use other shapes. There's no rule or law that says you have to stick to circles. You could do a floral pattern or clouds or something else. The dots just kind of creates a really neat and fun look to it that you can stamp over then when you're all done with other images. You could layer images on it or stamp directly on the surface. And I'll kind of show you what I mean as we go through this process together today of our playtime, our virtual play date. All right. And some are just gonna be a whisper of white and some are going to be shimmery. The Brilliance ink I really like because it has a shimmery quality to it, but there are any lots of white inks and any of them would work here. And sometimes I like to go in and add the light ones and then go make my darker ones. Now I'm gonna fast forward and put it on time lapse for you so that you don't just sit here watching me make dots and I'll show you the finished product. And here's the finished effect. You can see that light and shimmer, and it gives a whole new look to your watercolor backgrounds. 
And like we said at the beginning, you could use it on any color background, regardless, it doesn't have to be blues, you can use it on any color, and you can use other shapes, and it gives you this very nice canvas for sentiments or other images. It doesn't matter what style of image you're using, it will look really super unique and different. So let's compose a card with one of these backgrounds that we played and made today with our watercolor and this one was the bokeh technique. I went through and used two different dies on my one piece that I made so that I could get this heart for a project in the future to use. It's a very delicate lacy type heart, kind of geometric. And then I've got my yetis and my rectangle. I went through some ideas. I'm playing with the idea of like parchment vellum type circles or did I want glittery circles? This is the same circle die cut that I used to make the stencil that we used for the background because you can cut through stencil plastic with some of your dies. Um, so I went through some ideas and worked on composing. I've got the hello from the fawn lawn set. Lawn fawn. I reversed that. Um, and I like to do it sometimes double. I went with a plain white and then I thought kind of this snowy pearlescent white would add a nice pop to it with this iridescent bubble that I'm adding. So let's get this put together. I'm gonna to put it on fast forward so you can watch how the pieces come together. So here's our finished card. And of course I save all my pieces that I punched. These are great to make your envelope coordinate with your card or your inside greeting. You could easily put some of these in to keep with the outside theme going onto the inside. And so I always save my pieces and decide what I'm gonna do with them later. And because I'm super into the Nouveau drops and the embellishments and all the fun things that you add on, I'm gonna put a few of these sequins on here and use some transparent Nouveau drops in a nice icy blue. I'm gonna pick these up and put just a dot of glue. You ever get the sequins all stuck on your fingers? They always stick to everything but they're worth it. I love a little sparkle. And when you design things, how many of you are like me? I don't want them in even numbers. I want them in odds, like threes or fives. I don't typically like things super symmetrical, as you can tell by the slant of this design but it just gives that extra element of interest. Oh, did you see that kitty get up there? Oh my goodness. I always shake these down and test them on paper first so that they don't spit. Have you ever had it spit just at the worst time possible? And I just put my little dollop on there and I'm careful with the tip so that I don't have a pointy and it'll dry with this pretty translucent icy blue and I'll set this aside to dry and that's just one of the cards you can compose in minutes once you have backgrounds and things ready to go here's our other background that we created with the distress oxide inks on the acrylic block and we put our gel duo paste on there so that we could cold foil you don't have to use heat to foil things. There's a lot of different ways you can foil things. So I have my tube of foil. In this case, I'm using Deco Foil from a company called iCraft. You'll get lots of sheets in here. You're just gonna take one out and cut your piece. You get a nice long sheet and there's like five of them in there. You wanna make sure 
that if you have scraps that you use them, you could do a multicolor foiling by using a little bit of purple, a little bit of pink, and all the different colors of foils that you might have. So here it is, it's all dried and shiny and translucent of that flower that we did half of. I'm gonna lay my foil on there, and remember we burnish with just like our fingers or something really soft because we don't want scratches on our foil. So we're just gonna rub it on there and get all those edges. It's important to try to really get it to adhere well. And don't let your fingernails rub and burnish. All right, I'm gonna move this to fast forward so I can rub it and show you the reveal. Okay, now let's do the reveal. I think I let my, my paste, the gel duo, go too long, as in too many days, and it lost some of its sticky. So I'm gonna try my heat gun to see if I can bring back the tacky. Bear with me for the noise. And we'll see if we can restore the sticky by adding a little heat. And we'll try and experiment together. That's part of playing. I did this a couple of days ago and then got busy and sat it aside. And normally I let it dry about an hour and go back and work on it. But this one went a couple of days. Okay, so not too bad. Let's see about heating up those areas. And we'll see how this works out. It'll be nice to know if I happen to get caught up in the middle of something and have to walk away. Okay, I think that's working. I'll be back with you in just a minute so that you don't have to listen to the noise. So here it is, finished. We learned something new together today. I'll always share when things don't go perfect because nobody has those perfect Pinterest moments every minute of the day. And so I let my gel go too long. On my rose gold, I let it dry exactly about an hour. But if you put on a thicker coat or used a bigger stencil, you might need to let it go slightly longer than an hour. So then if you got busy like I did and got pulled away, I went off and did something and let this go for a couple of days, it lost some of its tackiness. So you saw me use my heat gun. It's a heat embossing gun. I applied a little bit of heat section by section and just applied and rubbed the foil and it worked. So we learned something new together. If you do get stuck and let your gel duo paste uh, go too long, you have an option to save it. So I'm gonna finish this up, make it into a quick card to show you and Thanks for being with me and thanks for having a play date. It's just what you need sometimes is to get alone with your friends and do some crafting. If you haven't hit subscribe, please do give me a thumbs up and a like and show me your creations. Come on over to Kim's DIY Tribe, our Facebook group I've linked below, as well as my webpage by the same name and share your creations with us. Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, I'm here for you. Have a great day. Okay, as I'm working on this card to finish it, I had a great idea. I wanted my word, my die cut word, to match the foiling. And I could coat it in the gel paste, but I thought that could be pretty messy. So instead, I bought some reactive mist spray a long time ago and just haven't ever opened it or used it. So I thought I'd use my dauber and daub on the reactive mist, which is a way you can make foil adhere to things with heat, like a laminator, which I happen to have. They're not expensive. They're like $20 from 3M or Scotch. And I put the mist on there. You've got to let it completely dry. And then you're going to wrap it. You're going to put the foil on and wrap it in parchment and run it through the laminator to adhere that foil. So I thought we'd try that together and see how it works out. So I've run it through the laminator with the foil and let's see if this works. 
Oh, awesome! Even our dot to our word. Okay, so there's a tip if you want to foil your die cuts.